All right, so get this. Today we're diving into, well, it's not just another World War II story. We're tackling a historical mystery that to this day has people scratching their heads. It's the Battle of Los Angeles. And it's a story that takes us right to the heart of wartime anxieties. Mm -hmm. Like how even when you're surrounded by conflict, we still, we as humans, still crave those explanations, even if those explanations well, they might take us down some pretty strange paths. Right. Okay, so uh, for those who might need a little refresher, let's rewind the clock. It's February 1942, World War II. It's in full swing. And the U.S., I mean, they're still reeling after Pearl Harbor. They are, to put it lightly, on edge. Oh, yeah, and especially on the West Coast. For sure. Just try to imagine living in Los Angeles back then. I mean, the psychological impact of Pearl Harbor, it was immense. All of a sudden, that threat, it felt so real, mm -hmm. you know, so close to home. Oh, absolutely. And you've got this like this backdrop of fear already. Right. And then in the weeks leading up to this event we're talking about, you start getting all these reports, people seeing unidentified aircraft over Southern California. Talk about upping the ante on the whole jitters front. Absolutely. Every light in the sky that nobody could explain, every rumor, every whisper, it all just added to this this growing sense of unease, this feeling like something big, something bad was right on the horizon. Okay, so picture it. It's late at night, February 24th. Radar picks up this unidentified object, and it's heading straight for Los Angeles. And I'm not talking some little blip they're unsure about. This thing, it sets off full-blown panic mode. And you have to remember, at this point in time, people were acutely aware of air raids, right? The possibility was constantly on their minds. The memory of Pearl Harbor was still so raw. And fear, I mean, once that takes hold, it's incredibly powerful. It can really shape how people see things, how they react. Oh, 100%. So what happens? Air raid sirens are blaring. The whole city is plunged into darkness because of the blackout orders. And everybody, I mean everybody, is bracing themselves for, well, they don't even know it. It's important to keep in mind, this wasn't some contained military response. This was an entire city put on high alert. Yes. Families huddled together in their homes, listening to anti-aircraft guns firing into the night sky. Can you imagine that? Just wondering if you're about to be attacked. And they kept firing too. We're talking hours. The <clears throat> sky over Los Angeles was lit up by explosions. Over 1,400 anti-aircraft ranch. Yeah. You have to wonder, at what point did somebody, anybody, stop and say, uh, are we are we sure about this? I mean, it really shows you the intensity of that moment, the sheer terror that gripped the city. But here's the thing. Despite all that firepower, all those explosions, not one enemy aircraft was ever confirmed. Not a not a single one. Not one. Wow. And get this. Not a single bomb was dropped either. It's like it's like opening a birthday present and there's there's nothing inside. Like what? <laughs> Talk about anticlimactic. Well. I don't know if I call it anticlimactic exactly. Don't forget, I mean, this caused widespread panic and confusion. Oh, right. Yeah, because now you've got everybody looking at each other like, what in the world just happened? So so what's the official explanation? What are people being told? Okay, so get ready for this. You're going to love this. The military, they chalked the whole thing up, the whole thing, to a false alarm. A false alarm. A false alarm. And get this, it was supposedly triggered by, wait for it, war nerves and a weather balloon. A weather, hold on, a weather balloon. They they unleashed that much firepower? I mean, we're talking over a thousand rounds on a weather balloon. It sounds, it sounds kind of crazy looking back, yeah. right? I mean, almost comical. But you have to think, back then, in that moment, mm -hmm. I mean, fear and uncertainty were running so high. It's true. People were primed to see threats everywhere. And in a way, it's kind of amazing what the human mind can convince itself of, you yeah. know? Especially when fear is involved. No, absolutely. And honestly, even without... You know, having the benefit of hindsight like we do, even back then it must have seemed, I don't know, a little flimsy. Oh, totally. I mean, come on, a weather balloon, it doesn't exactly scream imminent threat, you know. God, exactly. So naturally, people were skeptical. And who could blame them? The Battle of Los Angeles, as it quickly became known, I mean, it became this breeding ground for speculation and rumors, even full-blown conspiracy theories, which... I'm not saying I believe them, but... It's understandable, right? I mean, when they're saying it was a weather balloon and you just live through that, I mean, people are going to start to wonder and then they start talking. And... Exactly. And who can blame them? It speaks to this really deep-seated need we all have to make sense of the world, you know? Especially when we're faced with something as unsettling as a potential enemy attack. Our brains, they crave explanations. We look for patterns, anything to help us feel like we're back in control. So what like what kinds of theories were people floating besides? Well, besides the obvious, the government hiding something. Right. 
Right. Besides that, well, some people, they claimed it was a cover up. Like maybe the military was testing some secret new aircraft or some kind of weapon they didn't want the public to know about. OK, I've heard that one. Right. And then others, they went even further. They said it was, get this, aliens. Aliens. Aliens, mm -hmm. UFOs. And remember, this was when UFO sightings were really starting to take hold in the public imagination. True, true. It all kind of ties together. It does. You've got this perfect storm of, of wartime anxieties, right? Yeah. And then you've got this Cold War paranoia brewing, and you sprinkle in a little bit of good old-fashioned mystery, and bam, you've got yourself the Battle of Los Angeles. I mean, oh. it's honestly no wonder that people are still fascinated by it, oh. even today. It, it wasn't just, you know, people sitting around telling stories, right? This this actually had real-world consequences. Oh, absolutely. For one thing, military enlistments, they surged on the West Coast right after. Really? Oh, yeah. People were terrified. And they wanted to be ready if or I guess when it happened again. Wow. It makes you wonder, did the Battle of Los Angeles, even if it was all a big misunderstanding, did it actually end up serving some of the same purposes as a real attack would have? You know, it heightened vigilance. It it definitely fueled patriotism. And it it was a stark reminder that the war was far from over. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? Even a phantom enemy, something mm -hmm. that may not have even been real, can have very real impact. Mm. It can change the course of history. It's like this this weird feedback loop, fear leading to action, leading to more fear. But but what I find so interesting is even with all the speculation, all the theories, we still don't have a real answer. We don't know what really happened that night. Right. And that, my friend, that's part of why we're still talking about it. It's true. The mystery endures. It really does. Which, I guess, brings us to the big question, the question we always have to ask. Why did this matter? Why should we care about the Battle of Los Angeles today? It's not like we're worried about, you know, air raids on California anymore. Well, you're right. Maybe not air raids exactly, not in the traditional sense anyway. But I think those anxieties, those fears that fueled that night back in 1942, they still resonate today. That fear of the unknown, the, the possibility of these unseen threats, the feeling that maybe, just maybe, things aren't quite what they seem. I mean, those are all things that I think we still grapple with today, and maybe even more so now with everything going on, with all the uncertainty in the world, information overload, it can feel like. So what you're saying is, even though we can look back now, we know, or we're pretty sure, it was just a weather balloon. The real story, the thing that's important, is how fear, how all that uncertainty, it can kind of like take over. It's like the event itself, the Battle of Los Angeles, it's almost like it becomes this reflection, you know? Right. Like a mirror kind of showing us how we react when things get blurry, when we're not even sure what's real anymore. It's true. Like, you look in the mirror and you recognize yourself, but something's a little off, a little distorted. Exactly. And isn't that kind of what we're doing now? I mean, today, with everything that's going on, all the information coming at us, we're constantly trying to figure out, is this real? Is that real? Are we in danger? It makes you think, what will be our Battle of Los Angeles? Like, years from now, what's the event that people will look back on and say, Wow, that's when things really changed. Right. And what will they think? Will they will they see it clearly? Or will it be, like you said, will it be distorted by fear, by whatever's happening then? It's kind of freaky when you think about it like that. It is. But it's important. It reminds us that history, I mean, it's not just dates and names in a textbook. We're constantly looking back, rethinking things based on, well, on everything we know now. It's true. We're all a product of our own time, I guess. We are. Yeah. We are. So, yeah. So next time you're, you know, reading about some historical mystery, or even if you're just watching the news and something doesn't quite add up, remember the Battle of Los Angeles? It's a good reminder that sometimes the most interesting stories, they're not really about what happened. They're about us, about what we make of it all. And maybe, just maybe, the biggest, the most important battles, they aren't fought with guns and bombs, but with information, with how we see things, with trying to make sense of the world, especially when it feels like it doesn't make any sense at all. Well said. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, until next time, stay curious.